What's going on guys? Welcome back. I'm back in the shed here. I got the bikes behind me. They're all packed in. We got the Yamaha TTR 90. We got the, the good old YZ250. And we got the YZ450F. It's still winter out here in Western PA. Haven't gotten out to ride. All the tracks are shut down. It's really cold out. There's one indoor track. I haven't made it out there yet. It's kind of far from me. Uh, I've been thinking about going, but we might just wait until it gets warm. And then we'll get back to it. We'll get training uh, for a second season of becoming a C-Class champ. If you guys haven't watched season one, check it out. I'm gonna put a link right here for you guys. So you can go watch season one. It was a really cool uh, series that we kind of put together and I had a lot of fun doing it for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. For those of you that did watch and those of you that are subscribed, if you're not, hit that subscribe button. Like this video too, because I'm going over a bunch of awesome tips for you guys to get motocross sponsors in your upcoming season. So without further ado, I'm just gonna hop right into it, guys. First things off the bat, if you're trying to get motocross sponsors, you obviously have to be racing. You have to get some sort of uh, credentials under your belt. So maybe take a month or two to race, make sure you're practicing, and make sure you're gathering content. So that could be YouTube videos, that could be setting up an Instagram account, putting pictures, tagging stuff with your buddies every time you go out to practice or ride with your buddies, even when you're trail riding. Um, taking cool pictures of your bike, pictures of yourself suiting up for a race, training, exercising, a day at the practice track, taking vlog footage like I do, um, you know, things of that nature. It's obvious. So you have to document every time you go out and do this stuff and you have to get a little bit of credentials under your belt. So personally, I don't have a huge amount of credentials. What helped me in the long run was every time I would go and race, I would document everything that I did. So I have pictures of me racing for the first time when I was 15 years old. Granted, I only raced for a year and I only did D class and I took a really long break. Two, three years ago, I ended up getting a bike again and doing the same thing, going right back into D class. But what I did was I documented every single thing I did. And I made sure that I knew at what event, what day, and what place I got at every single event. And I have videos of this too. I usually do a GoPro or if I don't wear a GoPro, I have somebody take a little bit of footage for me or I take a picture race day. So that's what I do. So that's step one is starting to obviously compete you have to race motocross if you're trying to get motocross sponsorship you have to race that's obvious and you also have to document so you should be taking note of where you're placing who your competition is and where the event is and start documenting these things and start creating content that also documents your events so step number two is going to be actually reaching out to these companies now there's a bunch of different ways you can do this the easiest way that I found is just by going on Google and typing in key terms, uh, say like your the brand that you like to re represent, Bell Helmets, or let's go with O'Neill. O'Neill is a big one; they support a lot of riders. So you would type in O'Neill Motocross Rider Support. From there, you're going to find a page or a link that's going to take you to a rider support application or a rider sponsorship application. You can do this with any company. Moto Seat does this. FMF does this. You're going to find a lot of big name brand motocross companies and they almost all offer some sort of rider support. Now, you may be thinking, maybe I could get free gear, maybe I could do this. If you're an amateur rider, if you don't have a huge name, you know, if you're making your way up, if you're not impressed, if you haven't gone to Loretta's, you're probably not going to get free gear. What you're going to get is a discount code. Now, they offer this a lot. You could be a D-class rider. You could be an 85C rider. You're probably eligible to get some sort of discount code uh, as far as rider support from any of these companies. So that would be step one. Obviously reach out, fill out your rider support application. They're gonna ask you questions. Why do you think you should support us? Be very smart about your answers. Don't make it about me, I, this, that. It's not a bragging contest. They wanna see if you have good character. They wanna see if you really believe in that company. So that's how you're gonna write your response. So that's one way to do it. The other way to do it, and this is, I don't know if this is a, a little known secret or what, uh, there's not a whole lot of riders doing this. And this is a big platform that really gets you in touch with all of the big motocross brands and they always offer some sort of support to anybody at any skill level. And you're gonna use a website called hookit.com. I've been using this website since I was 15 years old and what it is, is a platform for you to kind of, um, you know, upload all of your content, put kind of your resume your, of your race career, 
so far and it kind of gives you a scoring based off of where you're at compared to other athletes or motocross riders on the page. From there, you'll have offers come in either to you or you can shop around and look for other offers. So as far as I know, Spy's on there, GoPro's on there, Dunlop's on there, Kawasaki Team Green's on there, Sunstar's on there, Renthal's on there, ODI's on there. I mean, you name it, there's a lot of name brand motocross companies that are on this website that you can get in touch with. So all you have to do is make a bio, upload your content, put in your race results. Anytime you go practice, put in those uh, practice sessions and it'll accumulate points over time based off of how consistent you are, how many sessions you do, how many races you race and where you place in your races. I know take all of, all of these points compare you to other people. What happens is these companies see your points and your level of commitment and that determines how much rider support you're able to get if, if you do get an offer. Once you get an offer, you have the ability to accept or decline that offer. Most of the time, if you have, say, two goggle companies offer you, it's common courtesy to decline one and accept one. So you don't wanna accept two goggle companies and then be a disservice to the other one when you're only using one goggle company or use one half the time and use the other one the other half the time. It just doesn't make sense. So once you accept it, you're pretty much in. They give you a discount code. The only thing that they ask in return is that you represent them 100% and fully. Sometimes they do have sticker requirements. So either the sticker on the helmet, the helmet wrap, or uh, you represent them on your graphics kit. And it is that simple. So I hope some of you amateur guys took something out of this video today. I hope you're gonna put some of these things into practice, especially if you are the person that's looking to get rider support. It's a lot easier than you think. Just be smart, look in the right places, try out hookit.com, and I'm sure you're gonna get some offers. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe for more, because I'm putting out content like this all the time. I'm also doing a marathon training series right now, since I can't really ride and I wanna stay in shape, and I am doing a marathon in May. Check that series out, it's really cool. If you guys are looking to get into shape, it definitely helps with motocross, and that's one of the reasons why I do it. Other than that, I hope to see you guys in the next video. I appreciate you guys watching.